too much has been made of that. He's... And I think he's still <laughs> awfully raw. Welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. A good weekend of racing to reflect on. We're not going to, to go into as much detail as we did last week. We did see your comments. We're going to try and fly through the review and put more focus on this weekend. Racing back at Cheltenham. It's never a chore. Never, ever a chore, is it? No, not in the slightest. And people sometimes go, oh, well, the racing, if you put it at another track, it, would you really be hopping up and down about it? But it's not at another track. It's at it's Cheltenham. And this is the first... I'm actually going to be tinged with sadness watching Cheltenham this weekend because it's going to be the first time this year at Cheltenham that I'm not going to be there. I know. Exactly the same for me as well. It does hurt. It really does hurt. But we've got a competition if you want to go to Cheltenham in January for Cheltenham Trials Day. We're giving away two tickets. What you have to do to enter is follow at Let's Talk Racing on Instagram. It's at LTR Pod. And then you have to like this video, screenshot, and send it to us via DMs over on Instagram. So at LTR Pod, do go and follow us. And we'll also be doing some extra giveaways over there for you to get your teeth stuck into. So very exciting. Do get involved. And there's also a bit of exciting news coming your way very soon. Very, very soon. Um, and I think we're both looking forward to sharing that. Any any clues? Oh, ah, yeah, no, it uh, hopefully will be very good for the two of us. Hopefully, we'll improve uh, what we're we're looking forward to, and and improve especially for those that watch LTR Plus or are a member of the channel. Uh, come past January time, it should really take an influx. That's I think the the biggest clue we can provide. Very very exciting indeed. I cannot wait, and maybe maybe this time next week. You might know what that news is. Uh, but let's focus on the racing over the past week. We're going to start at Sandown on Friday. Henry II won the Winton Officers Hurdle. It's a grade two contest. And he was disappointing at Chepstow first time up. I know he's a horse that we both loved. Probably needed Chepstow potentially because he came on leaps and bounds. Yeah, I think we've seen that with a few of the Nichols horses this year. And also he bumped into Chianti Classico, who's no bad horse in his own right for Kim Bailey. He put this race to bed pretty impressively. Obviously, I'm one of the, the many, many owners of Maximilian, who ran a grand race back in third he's probably just not quick enough over two and a half miles also didn't seem to like the ground massively so he'll be up to three miles we've been told the the river don or the prestige novices hurdle after christmas uh, at either doncaster or haydock will be next on the agenda for him winner's good though i don't think we'll see the best form until next year and he tackles the fence though uh, he'll struggle to win a grade one novice hurdle this year but like i say i think he could be a grade one chaser next season uh, moving on to saturday at sandown we had authorized speed who won the two-man novice hurdle very impressively. It looks like he's going to follow the Connie Hill path and go to the, the Tolworth next. And he's one of those horses that just looks, had, looks to have so much ability, although there was a, a hairy moment jumping the last. Yeah, very much so. A horse riddled with ability, and he's the type of horse that could win a Tolworth hurdle. You wouldn't know who's going to turn up in that type of race. I just have it in my head with this horse, though. He's going to be a horse that's going to win a Tolworth and he's going to be a, a pretty stingy, he'll be a 5-6-1 to one shot for the Supreme, and he'll be absolutely lapped. There we go. <laughs> no no holding back from Andrew there. Um, I agree. It'd be interesting to see, because obviously the Tolworth and the Betfair hurdle are about a month apart. If he wasn't to win the Tolworth, could you then go to a Betfair hurdle? But that contest is often a little bit weak, so we'll find out plenty that day. Uh, John Bon had his second start over fences, jumped very well, was clever at a few, beat Boot Hill well. He's now almost 6-4 to four for the Arkle, extremely, extremely short. I know you're a massive fan of his brother, but you were, as I say, you were impressed but lukewarm with his performance at Warwick. Is John Bond now the leading two-mile force, or do we still have to wait for these good Willie Mullins novice hurdles of last year to come out? Yeah, well, that, that's the main fly in the ointment. He's by far the best of what we've seen so far. Uh, as much as six to four skimpy, you wouldn't want to be laying too much bigger than that, given we haven't seen. But like you look at the entries for this weekend, you see the likes of Appreciated in there, Flame Bearer in there. Hopefully we'll see the likes of Sir Gerhard, Dysar Dynamo, El Fabiolo out around Christmas time. Still a lot to come out, a lot of water under the bridge. And as much as he, he was extremely impressive, I wouldn't take it away from him whatsoever. 
would he not be entitled to beat Boot Hill the way he did? I'd have thought all five of those horses that I, I've mentioned there would beat Boot Hill the same way and, and the, with the same ease that he has. I wouldn't be worried if you do have slips for the likes of El Hobiel or Segurhard. The fact that we've not seen them yet, Dysart Dynamo as well. Willie didn't start Segurhard over hurdles until a maiden hurdle at Christmas. Christmas. I think now what you need at the Cheltenham Festival doesn't necessarily scream experience because the fields are, are smaller and you can get away with, with a few more mistakes than you probably could do when the fields had five, six, seven more runners than they do now. Edward Stone, though, we do need to talk about Edward Stone. I think that the first talking point is Shishkin. He finished third, 15 lengths behind the winner. What did you make of his reappearance? Yeah, look, it wasn't great. Uh, he was niggled along early. He made a bad mistake three out, which blunted any chance. I think probably in isolation, we'll talk about Honeysuckle in a couple of minutes' time. In isolation, it wasn't the worst run in the world. It's just the fact that everyone has such high expectations of this horse that anything other than winning wasn't, wasn't going to be uh, what you'd expect. Edward Stone, you know, I think me and, and plenty others are, are probably having to eat plenty of humble pie at the moment with him. He just keeps improving. He's on an upward trajectory. Still, still don't really see him as my champion chase winner but at the same stage I'd have never told you put the kettle on would win a champion chase so these things can happen strange things can happen it was just funny I was surprised I thought Grenatine would travel into the race easier than he did it looked just a bit of an effort for Grenatine I don't know whether because he was a bit more forward to take the Halden Gold Cup this year whether they may be left half of his Tingle Creek run at Exeter. That's just something that bared in mind to me because he was flat to the boards at three out and he kind of shouldn't have been. So that's just something that I thought from the form. But Edward's done very impressive. Yeah, he was impressive. A career best, in my opinion, for him. And he does, like you say, I was one of those that, that were doubting the arc or form. I think many did. And he's out with Blue Lord as well. They're both proving that wrong. Shishkin, I, I tweeted afterwards. I said it was a decent enough return. And I think people may have, have, have taken that the wrong way. In my head, reading Nicky Henderson's comments before, I didn't get the impression that he thought he had Shishkin back to his very best. Like, the, the complications that he had after Cheltenham, I think he said there was five or six spots across his body which he was lame and he had issues with. I just thought it was unrealistic that a horse like that would come back and put in a 170 plus performance over fences, especially over a, a sharp. It's not really two miles at Sandown, it's just short of two miles. So that probably wouldn't play to his strengths anyway. So uh, I'm not sure. I think, I think he's going to be better up in trip. I think he may have lost that spark over two miles but I do think plenty of ability remains he finished third he beat some very good horses despite being beaten by Grenatine and Edward Stone and uh, he's not as good as he was but I don't think in the context it was an absolutely dreadful run like some of the comments on Twitter were suggesting that he'd just be retired there on the spot it's, it's ridiculous a horse has finished third in a grade one over two miles he was beaten 15 lengths by an Arkle winner he was beaten uh, eight lengths by Grenatine who had had a prep run had won very well, looked like he had, he stepped up from last year as well. Like I know on Shishkin's best form, you, you'd expect him to be beating these horses, but he's had so many issues, you've got to give him the slack. And I didn't think it was the worst run in the world. I would like to see him step up a trip. Ascot chase over two miles and five, and then maybe skip out and go to entry for the melling. Or if you're going to run him before the Ascot chase, I'm not sure where you would. You, you aim at the Ryanair at Cheltenham, but I just don't think he's a two-miler anymore. I don't think he's got the speed, and I don't think he jumps... Um, accurately enough to compete over that distance anymore anyway moving on to ferry house on saturday and we had facile vega making his hurdling debut and just these horses we had constitution hill not long ago facile vega watching these young horses that are just filled with excitement absolutely ripping it up and it was just a maiden hurdle i know the times weren't special but he couldn't have done it any easier he bolt out in front and um and he won an encounter he just looks special 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 horse yeah he does uh, it was it was partially and mainly the reason me and dad went down on saturday as well uh two ferries was to see him we've been very lucky because we were at leopard's Den the, the two times he ran we were at cheltenham so we've seen him four out of five times he's run and you just gotta you, you gotta lap these horses in when you can go to see them i know some of the the stopwatch Doomonger brigade out there were giving out that his time was slow and stuff like that it means absolutely nothing he won in an absolute common canter and I think Ruby Walsh always goes on an awful lot when he's talking on some of these programs but how long it took for these horses to to 
stop after the finish line. This horse, Paul Townend, nearly had an accident because he almost jumped the first hurdle on the circuit. Again, he couldn't get him to stop. Other horses were already in there having their showers by the time Fasal Vega was even close to the parade ring again. So it just goes to show it's not always just on the clock. This horse had bag loads in hand. And I suspect you'll find in time at their certain grade, like the Elliott horses that come second and fourth, they'll win plenty of races. So it won't end up being too bad. And people saying he's very short at, at even money five to four for the Supreme. Well, what price do you want to lay him? Because I'll, I'll take a bigger price if you want to lay him. Because I, I, I know I'm not going to barge in at that price. But at the same stage, it just seems to be a blanket statement these days to say, oh, that horse is too short. Well, what are you laying? Are you going to lay five to two? I certainly wouldn't want to. I don't know. I just think he's an absolutely freak. I really do. I think him and Constitution Hill are, are two very, very exciting horses. And could you imagine a 2024 champion hurdle? I know they've talked about chasing with uh, Fasal Vega. But could you imagine a 2024 champion hurdle with Constitution Hill and Fasal Vega? That is just the stuff of dreams. Joy Mashan also won the other division of the, that two-mile maiden hurdle. Your thoughts? Yeah, look, a good, imp- a good performance. It, it was a pretty decent race. Good land went early, which was a bit of a shame. He's a tough horse. He'll always be a bit better than you think he is because he is tough. I don't know where they would go with him. But probably a few graded races, and if he's not up to that, maybe a, a crank at a Martin Pipe or something like that. He's a pretty useful animal. Lossy Mouth won the Grade 3 Juvenile Hurdle, and she was the big talking point going into it. I think she was the one with the reputation uh, the, the floods of anti-post punters um, were, were backing her for the, the Triumph already. I think she was 8-1 to one, uh, for the Triumph Hurdle when she, she jumped off. Uh, in the grade three at Ferry House on Sunday. Strange that Paul Townend didn't choose to ride her. I think he rode Zarek the Brave. Obviously, he had to run. He rode him that day, so you could you could semi-understand it. But just with the, with the hype around Lossy Mouth and the connections, I, I maybe thought that he would pick her. Triumph price, is it fair? I think roughly around four to one, three to one. Yeah, I think it's pretty fair, to be honest. It, it reminded me an awful lot, obviously, same silks, but it reminded me of Vauban and Phil Dore last year at the Dublin Racing Festival. And yet again, I was stung by, by backing the form horse in Zarek the Brave. I just thought, town end on it. He's won by 15 lengths. There's an awful lot to like about this horse. And he was put in his place. Lossy Mouth came down the outside, was, was three or four wide all the way. Couldn't have been convenient. But at the same stage, he still had bag loads in hands. And I know, you know, juvenile fillies don't have a great record in the Triumph. I think they've only won one of the last 20 renewals, which is something to bear in mind. But she looks a bit of a cut above the average juvenile filly we're used to seeing. Marie National won the Royal Bond for Barry Connell, a horse that you absolutely love. I, I just had flashbacks of, of moments where you've been cheering home winners, Barry Connell winners. Uh, and I'd imagine you gave Marie National an almighty lift at Fairy House. Yeah, well, a little bit. Now, it was panic stations because it looked like coming down to the last that he's going to win uh, perhaps a shade cosy. And then he, he absolutely bungles the last and he just got up uh, but it was the moment of the weekend for me uh, me and dad were standing out in the rain clapping this horse in Barry Connell giving a big ones to the crowd and he was then huddling around with Brian Gleeson on the RTE coverage and he turns to the small crowd to us and raises the mic aloft it, right in front of us all <laughs> us there hey Barry <laughs> It was absolutely quality stuff, and and right, rightly so. Look, you know he's a man that he's invested an awful lot into the game. He deserves his day in the sun. He's gone and nipped Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins in a photo finish. You know, good on him. I think this horse is very good. Um, I think he's going to be underplayed because it's Barry Connell, and that's just going to constantly be a theme with this. But I think if the front two were res- reversed, and if Irish Point had won and done Marine Nationale the way that Marine Nationale's done Irish Point with exactly what's happened. Everyone would be going up in arms about this Irish Point being a, a fantastic horse. Now, he's run a very good race in his own yes. right, but everything went wrong for Marine Nationale. The ground went against him. He got hampered by the rags halfway down the back. He's missed the last, and he is still won. I think he's a quality operator. Obviously, everyone will point now to the Supreme Novice Hurdle. Do you see that as his ultimate target? I know Barry has said that, but do you see him as an out-and-out two-miler? Yeah, I think so. He's a speedy horse. He wants a bit of nicer ground. Uh, So, look, I'm not saying he's going to win a Supreme because you've got bloody Faso Vega there. I think in a normal year you would be thinking about this horse as a very, very good chance. And he still could run into the frame in a Supreme. I'd love to see it. But 
you know, he, he is up against it. There's no getting away from that. I just think at the moment, what, what you will get is you'll get people trying to, to tell you about other Mullins horses, other Elliot horses. And in the book, this horse quite clearly is the second best in the two mile novice hurdle division at minimum at the moment. Here we go. Very strong. On Marie Nationale. Uh, I didn't expect anything else, to be fair. And Mighty Potter, I didn't <laughs> expect that performance in the Drimmore. I really didn't. Uh, he, he clattered a few. He jumped well in the main, but did make a few mistakes. But just uh, the further he went, the better he was. He was not stopping, was he? What was he like after the winning post? Yeah, no, he was very good. He was very strong. Um, he, he turned away Gallard de Manil very easily, as did Bambridge. I thought, I must say, I had my doubts about Mighty Potter. I, I think he's been very good. I can understand that, but I just haven't fallen in love with him. I thought on, on, on Sunday he was absolutely class. Um, it was difficult conditions. The ground was deplorable. It was lashing rain, kind of sleeting rain. Very easy for a horse, especially out in front, to kind of shirk the task. And there was absolutely none of it. And, you know, he, he does have to go. He has to go right on the top of your list for the turners. It would certainly be, be biting me in the backside about his run in the Supreme last year because I just wouldn't be... I wouldn't be able to just look past that as easily as some people might, maybe. Uh, and, and look, with Three Stripe Life, I know we're his two biggest fans, probably. I wouldn't be giving up on him at all. I thought he was actually jumping superbly. And then he just makes one bad mistake. And, and look, Davies lost his irons. He has to pull him up. These things can happen. He hasn't had any type of race, any hard race. He'll be back out at Christmas time. And fingers crossed, back in the winner's enclosure. One mare that has struggled to do anything wrong for a number of years is Honeysuckle. Be the queen of our sport, and, and we've been very lucky to have her. Although the weekend saw her beat for the first time in six... Well, she won 16 on the trot. It, she was going for 17, and unfortunately it wasn't to be. Beaten by Tipu, Classical Dream was second. You were there. What was What was the feeling? Just dull, really. Like there was this almighty cheer, as there often is for Honeysuckle when she took it up going down to two out, and it just looked like it was all going the same. I've seen it happen plenty of times. I've seen it happen a couple of times in the Hatton's Grace in the Irish Champion. She takes over, and it's it's all over, and she just didn't quite have the same just zest, you know. And she's suddenly being being swamped going down to the last. I don't think she's run a bad race. Uh, I, don't, I certainly don't think she's been outstaged because I would make a, a strong argument two or three of her absolute best pieces of form were over this trip, including the mare's hurdle, including winning this race three times. Um, so I don't think that's an angle. It just didn't seem like she just had the juice in the legs. Um, and maybe that's a, a case of, of maybe slightly regressing. But again, it's one of those things. Obviously, everyone wanted her to win. In isolation, was it a bad run? No, like she she's ran a perfectly respectable race. No, I completely agree, and and I think it's almost a similar case to well, she ran better than Trishkin did in the Tingle Creek, but a, a similar case where when you set the bar so high, if you don't run to that, then people just drop you, and it's a massive shame. She's she's absolutely magic. The one thing I would say with her now looking forward is her next start will be in the Irish Champion Hurdle at the Dublin Racing Festival. I think State Man could turn up there. If State Man beats her, do you think she's going to run at Cheltenham? I don't think so. Um, I, I can't imagine Connections even wanting to go and win the Mayor's Hurdle, to be honest. I know some people have muted that as a possibility. I think that's just a, a, almost an acceptance of defeat, uh, that she can't run in the Champion Hurdle. I think it would depend how she ran. Look, if she was beaten kind of similarly to how she was on Sunday, you might have to call stumps. If she goes down in a photo with State Man and the two of them are 15 lengths clear, she's still more than entitled to be there because she's got the best vote. She's got one of the best two or three pieces of form in the race. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I just hope she goes to Leopardstown and, and, and performs with credit. And, and I think for, for racing perspectives, you would like to see her at Cheltenham and you'd like to see her at least try and give Constitution Hill a race on her backyard. What do you do with the winner? Very hard. Uh, he'd be an absolute shoe-in for the Aintree Hurdle <laughs> if it was soft ground. Um, he seems to just... He's a really talented horse to you, Pope, but he's a bit needy. Like, he needs soft ground. He needs kind of a certain trip. But, but like, he doesn't quite have the speed for two miles. I don't think he'd end up quite staying three miles. 
He just needs two and a half miles on pretty soft ground and there's very few options of that. So great four for Rob Corr, uh, you know, for, for, for those connections, they're, they're putting heaps into the game and, and they were just touched off in a grade one with Irish point. But I just don't know where on earth you go with that horse because he needs two and a half miles in soft ground and he'll get two and a half miles at Aintree, but he won't get the ground. He'll get the ground in Ireland, but he doesn't have the two and a half mile races. He's a very tricky horse to place. Yeah, maybe try him at three. Maybe, maybe you try. And better days ahead beat the talking point, uh, talking horse at Chapeau du Soleil in the bumper that day. Now, the one thing I'm just going to say is suddenly King of Kingsfield being so unimpressive winning a bumper by four lengths on his first start doesn't look too bad now. No, uh, I, I can understand that. Um, look, it was good to see him g- get his career on track and Geez, the Morans have, have spent an awful lot of money. They, they deserve a, a few decent horses. Um, I would be taking this this form with, with an almighty grain of salt. It was an absolute farce of a race. Now, I'm not a time guru or anything like that, but I think it was 30 seconds slower than the bumper the previous day. Now, I know it was softer ground and stuff like that. The ground had gotten pretty rotten by then, but... It was a farce of a race. I wouldn't give up on Chapeau de Soloy. Now, would I go and back him for a champion bumper? Certainly not. Um, I think the, ho- the the winner is good, but I think there will be better bumper horses out there, certainly. Yeah, no, I think so as well. Um, and I don't even think um, Better Days Ahead is the best in Elliot's yard. I think we'll see plenty more of King of Kingsfield on his next run. I, do, I really do. Uh, but that's our review of the last... Uh, last week in racing we are going to move on now to this weekend and give it a good run through uh, Cheltenham December meeting is here we've got good racing on Friday but the majority of the good stuff comes on Saturday the feature is the December Gold Cup well one of the features is, is the December Gold Cup a really competitive handicap plenty of horses that did run in the Paddy Power turning up here I know that you are a massive fan of Warlord at the start of the season who ran in the Holden Gold Cup is a step up and trip perfect for him yeah, I think it is. Uh, look, he, he ran deplorably in the in the Holden Gold Cup, to be honest. He, he made a bit of a mockery of me. Uh, he was very average in that. Now, I was campaigning for him to run in the Paddy Power. Uh, he's going to this race instead. I'd give him a, I'd give him a second chance. Now, I, I would say it's near on last chance saloon for me and Warlord, even though he's a young horse. I, I'm, I'm kind of losing a bit of patience with some of these Tizard horses. But he's 8-1. to one. I think it's a fair enough each-way price. He should be suited by two and a half miles. He's got some decent course form. That Oracle is looking slightly better than it maybe did a month ago. Uh, and he was fourth in that. So he's got an awful lot going for him. If I was to highlight a main danger, I wouldn't put anyone off having a few quid on Il Rodoto, to be honest. I thought he shaped with an awful lot of promise in, in the Paddy Power. Looked like a horse that maybe just blew up right at the end. And I think also the front two in that race are probably graded horses. So no disre- um, no disregard in that performance. So he'd be the main challenger. I know he's five to one or something like that. But Warlord and Il Rodoto against the field for me. I, I must admit, I looked through this race heavily and I just kept coming down to the same horses I always do. Il Rodoto being one of those. But then again, I actually think he's a two mile. He just needs a really solid gallop. Something like the two mile race at Aintree would be right up his street or even a Grand Annual. I do think a really interesting race is the international hurdle over two miles. We've got at the moment, we've got, uh, I like to move it at the head of the market at five to four. Epiton six to four. You'd like to think if she runs, she'll be shorter than that. Nappers Hill, three to one. First Street, six to one. I'm not sure if he runs and Epiton will, but very competitive. The two that look very likely to run will be I like to move it and Nappers Hill. But Epiton is the, the, the interesting one because on her very best form, you'd like to think she'd be beating both of the newcomers in this division, I like to move at a Napa's Hill. Um, but I, I can't really see any reason why they would enter her and not run her. Because if she runs at Christmas um, in the in the Christmas hurdle at Kempton, she's going to be beaten by Constitution Hill. So that doesn't sound like much fun. Maybe you run her here and, and, and pick up a grade two prize. Yeah, potentially so. Uh, look, I think she would have the, the winning in this race. She'd be odds on if she was declared for the race as well. Obviously, we don't have the benefit of that luxury at the moment, but uh, it, it's an interesting one. I've kind of looked at the race 
more so, I suppose, on the case that she wouldn't run, just because I think it's a it's a more interesting one to 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 try and decipher that way. Um, I, I would prefer out of the two. I must say, I prefer I like to move, but I thought he was a electric in the Great Wood Hurdle. I wouldn't back him now. I know he's now six to he's six to five or six to four, and that for sales three to one. I wouldn't back him at that price. I think he'll drift. There'll be money for for the nickel source, uh, but he's. I think he's a good horse. He's a good horse around Cheltenham. He's won there plenty of times. And he's just a horse that constantly gets the job done. He's maybe not the most spectacular horse in the world, but he keeps getting the job done, keeps putting ones by his name, and there's an awful lot to be said for that. The Albert Bartlett trial is is the other big race uh, that day. McConnell's got one in there. Grand Soir. Is that where you're going to be going? Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure whether he's going to run or not. He's, he's entered in this race and he's entered in a graded race at Cork on Sunday. Now, I think the ground at Cork could be deplorable, so he may come here for a bit of nicer ground. He's, he's an interesting horse. He's a slow horse. McConnell's slow horse. Is that not your absolute bread and butter? It is my absolute bread and butter, but I've got my fingers burnt a few <laughs> times now, Josh, I'm being a little bit more circumspect. Because if, if I put this horse up, then I'm just being put down as a man that puts up every McConnell horse. I'm being put down as the owner of Bardenstown Lad. I actually owned, trained and rode Bardenstown Lad at, at, at Cheltenham last month. Mm. Uh, hence why he, he ran so poorly. <laughs> so I've just got to be more circumspect. I think he's got a very good chance of staying three miles. Um, I, I know that we've all been caught was an eye catcher at the November meeting. But I think... Too much has been made of that. He's... And I think he's still <laughs> awfully raw. As much as I agree with that, I was hoping you wouldn't band him in the same as like Fakira, that race over in Ireland where you, you, you stay on in, in the Nathaniel Lacey. Like he's not that. He's better than that. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying he's better than that. But I'm just saying a three mile race around Cheltenham for your second run under rules is a tough assignment. And he looked like he didn't have a clue at the November meeting. And I just wouldn't be piling <laughs> in relatable. at a very short price. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't have a clue either. But, <laughs> uh, but I just wouldn't be piling in at a short price on him. I think a lot has been made. Hmm. And it's a bit like, he reminds me, I know, he's a much better horse before you start crabbing me, but he reminds me of when they kept running under supervision in novice chases here last year. And the horse just wasn't ready to run over fences at Cheltenham, but they just constantly kept doing it. I just, I'm just i surprised this horse isn't running in something a little less demanding than three miles around Cheltenham. So where are you going to go? Oh, it's obviously going to be Grand Soir. I'm just making a case for the entirety of the race. I also think, actually, Grove Road is an interesting horse to keep the right side of. He certainly shouldn't be 20-1 to 1 currently in, the, in that betting. I quite fancy one in here. He's 33-1. to 1. I can't, I can't quite work it out. I can't quite work it out. It's, it's Lucinda Russell's uh, De Legislator, right? And let, let, me just, let me just make the case. Now, I, I understand that a two and a half mile novice race at Hexham compared to three miles in a greater contest at Cheltenham are two polar opposites of the racing spectrum. But, but, um, he was an expensive purchase, cost 170,000 euros. And to be honest, that's kind of working out. I think that looks a reasonable buy. His point to point win is working out very well. He had Snake rolling behind, a uh, blue fin will do. The, the exciting Jingenstown Gordon Elliott horse that could be lined up for a Cheltenham handicap. And then also Thomas Moore finished fifth in that point to point, who's 100 to 30 for this. 33 to 1. I think he looks like he's going to run. Derek Fox is booked. I think he screamed a three-miler and he could be one just sneaking under the radar. And if he was more, maybe more fancy connections, he could be, uh, he would be shorter. And I think he will run. And if he does run, I think uh, he'd be very interesting. Obviously, the downside is there's currently eight entered. I'd imagine one or two will come out. So the each-way money isn't going to be fantastic. You can have one or two places. But 33s now, if he can get three places before the decks, um, I, I think just the legislator could be under looks. Why are you smirking? Come on. I'm just smirking because I was making a case for Maximilian last week uh, to you. We were just chatting away for the Sandown race. And you pretty much told me under no uncertain terms that the northern horses aren't worth toffee in these races down south. And here you are putting up a Lucinda Russell horse. Like You're going against, you're finally listening to the mm. man that came up to us in the rotunda the night before Cheltenham and told us that Lucinda Russell was <laughs> the absolute queen of racing and Corrick Rambler would win by a street. Did we it's, back the horse? No, no we didn't. No, it's true. I just think with him, 
Um, and, and with Lucinda Russell at the moment, she's had an awful lot of money pumped in, and she is buying these expensive point to pointers. Like she's having two, multiple two hundred granders in the yard, multiple one fifty plus, and at some point they are going to click. And I think the fact that they've gone from Hexham to Cheltenham, I think, is eye catching. And I don't think they're doing it for a day out, and could run into the places. So the legislator thirty three to one worth a little poke. Then we move on to Doncaster, and they've got a Grade Two Summit Juvenile Hurdle won by Peace and Co back in the day. That was one of the horses that really got me into racing. Beat uh, Stark Tech that day. What? Uh, what? Go back and watch that. Go back and watch that right now. If you've never seen it, it's something else. Uh, anyway, a Nusret is likely to run here for a Joseph O'Brien script writer. Could he go here? Could he go to Cheltenham? Do you think that this this um, the Isaac Manure horse is very smart? I, I was at Punch's the end of the day. He won his maiden hurdle and, and he looked smart. Uh, there was an awful lot of money for him beforehand. It's just going to be interesting. It's going to be the first kind of, I suppose, combinement of, of some of the juvenile form lines for this year, which are just always a little bit interesting. We saw last last year with Pied Piper went over, won a race around Cheltenham. Fakir Duderee's runner won a race around Cheltenham a number of years ago. So it, Joseph's done it before uh, with that type of horse. And I think he's just getting a guide how good this horse is. Interesting with scriptwriter. I I think scriptwriter and Capricorn are are in uh, both of the Cheltenham and Doncaster races. I'd say Milton Harris will run one one and one in one. Um, but I would say Nussers could could easily beat either of those. Capricorn, obviously a horse close to your your heart after his second at Exeter behind Roman Cerro Ledon, who uh, was your first time on, on the big screen. <laughs> Hey, it's a second time with this weekend. I thought I did a much better job and I spent far more hours the night before going through checking names and likely winners saying, if, if this comes up, am I going to be put under the bus? <laughs> no, I'm not. And I don't think I made any mistakes, um, but I'm sure someone will point it out on Twitter like they always do. Punchestown Sunday, John Durkin, Galloping de Champs. Like if, if, if there was a race designed for him for his comeback run, surely two and a half mile grade one at Punchestown is just perfect, no? Yeah, absolute bread and butter stuff. Uh, personally speaking, I just can't see the horse getting beat, really. Uh, Conflation's in there. He, he needs further. Fury Road's in there, needs further. Look, he, he's just better than these horses as well, whether it's their ideal trip or not. Uh, the interesting one is Statter. I'd be interested to see whether they'll run Statter. I can't see why they would over two and a half miles. But if they did, it means that they're certainly going to go down the Gold Cup route with him, which I would see as interesting. I think there's worse pokes in that Gold Cup market than him each way at the moment. Cork also uh, play host to the Hilly Way. Enigamin makes his return. Um, I'd imagine he's going to win pretty comfortably and, and stamp his name down as come and beat me in the champion chase, although he is that person anyway. Let's look at best bets then for this weekend. I've got one. Uh, I'll quickly get it out of the way. Mine is flight deck at 10 to 1 each way in the three mile handicap hurdle at Cheltenham on Friday. I'm not a fan of Dusa and I'm not sure a fan of him switching back to hurdles. I think 150 is a lofty enough mark for him. And I do think that flight deck was, uh, if you watched the race the last time at Carlisle, John Joe gave him the absolute full works and he got beat and I think they'd have been stung by that and I just think he's an improver I think he's better than his mark I think he'll take a, a good bit of beating actually on, on, on Friday I'm looking forward to seeing him run how many have you got? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm keeping the, the, the scoreboard ticking here. I've got five. You've absolutely stung me only having one. Uh, but a combination throughout the entirety of the weekend. Two for, for Friday at Cheltenham, the 12.40 race. The novices hurdle quite like gentle slopes. One at the bumper. Uh, won the big bumper race at the November meeting. Goes over hurdles for the first time. He's five to one. I think it's too big a price for Milton Harris and Johnny Burke. And in the three o'clock I'm hoping that I've found the right race for any harm in asking. I know me and you have been playing bingo with this horse. When is he going to be off? He's 6-1. to one. He couldn't have been more of an eye-catcher at Huntington the last day. Uh, it's just a, a case of when they want to press go with this horse as to when he's going to win one of these types of races. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have to talk about this. I was, I was literally going to say something very, very similar. I wasn't going to put him up because I just didn't trust that he'd be off. But if he was to run in that two-mile race at Ascot before Christmas or even the Betfair hurdle wouldn't want to make any false accusations but he's definitely one to be on the right side of yeah 100% look we, we, I think plenty of people will know that at this stage it's just a case of when you can get him uh, I, I don't know he, he mightn't even run on the weekend but if he does or well, sorry he is entered on, on Friday at 3 o'clock but whether it's his day or not we'll probably know from the from the, 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 the price add off time whether it's going to be yay or nay to that 
He's 25 to 1 for that race at Ascot before Christmas as well. I might be tempted to, to have a little nibble. Yeah, well, he could win. Like, I think the absolute ideal way we'd work it out here is if he wins by like a head or something on Friday. So Lamb's the best bet, but they, he only goes up two pounds or something because he'd have a great chance in one of those big races. We, we all know that. Moving on to Saturday, over at Navin, the 246 race, the Fox Rock handicap chase like Falcano. He's done his duty doing his three races in beginner's chases. I think he's a pretty well handicapped horse now going over fences. He'll win a big handicap at some stage. The 115 at Cheltenham. I think editor De Geet is crying out for this race. Niall Hoolan on him. Top weight. Get him back out in front. I don't see anything that will go and beat him. And the 305 at Punchestown on Sunday. I'll be down at Punchestown for John Durkin Day. And the 3 mile 1 handicap chase. Famous for last year, seeing John Adams tip up at the last when he was about to win at 25 to 1. Still not over it, really. But I quite like notice to close in this for Seamus Neville. Ran an eye catching race this weekend, actually, at Fairley House in the Lady Riders race. Came fourth. Has only gone up a pound for that effort. Needs three mile one. I think he's got a really good chance. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. Obviously, we've got the giveaway. Just to just to remind you, two tickets for Cheltenham Trials Day in January. You have to follow LTR Pod on Instagram. It will just be linked down in the description. You have to like this video and then screenshot your like. Send it to us via DMs on Instagram, and you will be entered. Uh, but if you did enjoy this video, subscribe, comment, and uh, we'll look forward to reading your thoughts ahead of this weekend.